are you feeling something or is it me? And he said, no, no, the, the desk's moved a little bit. So we just got back on the floor. We were in the uh, in the garage next door, and all the guys there were just talking about it. They felt that there, uh, it was pretty light, but the the desk definitely moved down here. And I would say you're right, Mandy. We probably dropped about 40 points or so on the Dow Jones Industrial Average here. And of course, as Bill said, the epicenter appears to be uh, in Virginia. Back yeah. to you. Okay. Thanks very much for that, Bob. Uh, we'll get back to the markets in a second, but I just want to get an update once again from Bill Griffith because, of course, you're following this story. We're hearing that uh, Capitol buildings have been evacuated. The Pentagon's been evacuated, and uh, oh, Bill's gone. Okay, well, yeah, not you know, worry. Mineral, Mineral Virginia, by the way, pretty much the exact center of the yeah. state. And I'd be interested to know if you know. Here we are, north of that area in uh, middle of Virginia. I'd be interested to know how far south it may have been felt, and west of that area as well. Yeah, and actually, we're also hearing from Kayla Tausche, who, of course, has been following the DSK, the Dominic Strauss Khan story, uh, down in Lower Manhattan. The courthouse there has also been evacuated in the middle of the DA's presser, and. And, uh, and Mary Thompson, I think, has also been evacuated from the NYMEX. So, uh, so clearly people aren't taking too many chances here uh, with this quake. Very interesting. Yeah, when you look at a quake, yeah, when, when you look at a quake's magnitude, you go up two tenths from five eight to six. I mean, those are exponential gains, right? So it's, yep. it's not just a slight uptick. Going from five eight to six is, is a magnitude of exponential. Hey guys, yes, we, we get a word here that they felt the mild tremor up in Martha's Vineyard, where the president, of course, is vacationing right now. That takes us even further north and east of here. I don't know whether you know this, Bill, but um, is there any possibility of a tsunami warning? Has there been any, any kind of ramifications of that matter? Given that this was an uh, epicenter uh, in, on land, mm -hmm. I doubt it. Uh, but uh, we've not heard anything at this point uh, from the USGS. I would think that would become part of the, the news announcement as they announce the epicenter here and the magnitude. But they've said nothing about that at this point here. Okay. Bill. Let's bring it. There we go. We got, that's the intraday tick on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So where are we right now? We're still up 159, but there was definitely, as, as Bob said, there was some move down right at the top. Obviously, it's, it's an event. And if you have to evacuate the NYC, which we don't know what's going to happen with the electronics, whatever, then certainly that's going to put a that could put a Absolutely. halt to trading itself. Yeah. We'll have to wait and see if that happens. There was a drop of drop of about 50 points as we were talking about a moment ago on the Dow. Uh, in general, though, Bob, I mean, we've got a pretty good rally going on here. I'm wondering how much, though, Bob, it's uh, just a dead cat bounce from very oversold levels. Oh, God. All right. Hold on, guys. I just talked to NYC people. Okay. Okay. Bob, Bob is, uh, is, is talking to some NYC people. We're hopefully going get, to get, get an update on what's happening down there with regards to the quake that was obviously felt there. Uh, uh, we're ticking back up in terms of the markets now. We're back up by 1.6%. Uh, yeah, and I guess, you know, Bob obviously is going to find out what their plans are. To the uh, uh, Bob Pisani, I believe you're there. I know you were just talking to some of the NYC officials. Any plans to, no. to change trading, to... to to do anything. At the right. NRC. I just I just spoke with the the head of floor operations at the New York Stock Exchange. There is no evacuation. Uh, operations are going on as normal here. Uh, although I do understand that some other buildings outside may be evacuating. I'm checking with them right now. But New York Stock Exchange, no evacuation. Everything operating normally. I also check with the systems people behind us that operate the main uh, sort of electronic nerve center. Everything is working as normal there as well. Hold on. They're about to make an announcement. Mm -hmm. This is very unusual. They're going on the loudspeaker. Directly speaking, we have information of an earthquake in the Virginia area. There will be aftershocks felt in this area. There is no reason to evacuate the building at this time. We will give you further information as we receive it. Thank you. Uh, that is the, uh, the, uh, the head of the floor operation saying that they're anticipating there may be some aftershocks. However, they are not evacuating the building and they will have further announcements very shortly. And as I mentioned, I talked with the systems head behind us. All systems are operating as normal right now. Okay, we're also uh, getting news as well from the NOAA that there is no danger of a tsunami uh, from this quake that has been felt, obviously, in Washington, in New York, and as, uh, as far as Martha's Vineyard. Um, Possibly even further. At this stage, we're still just uh, following this developing story. The six uh, six magnitude quake hitting Virginia. Yeah, obviously going. Let going me see up. if I can grab uh, some yeah. of the uh, some of the floor people here, and we'll give you an update in one minute here. Yeah, Let obviously, me here. Bob, great work on that. Obviously, we're also going to be in touch with the Nasdaq, check their facilities. I know they got stuff here in New York, but they also have other centers that are outside of the city. A lot of those are put in place post 9/11. Looks like trading continuing right now. Obviously, we got the Pentagon being evacuated. You heard that. So there's some preliminary 
details coming in about what operations, both governmental and in the markets, are going to continue right now. If you're just joining us, again, a 6.0 magnitude earthquake has hit pretty much smack dab in the middle of the state of Virginia, but it was felt as far as D.C., as far as New Jersey. We felt it here at CNBC. It was felt at the New York Stock Exchange reports, yep. even that it was felt on Martha's Vineyard, the island off of Massachusetts, where the president is currently vacationing. And Phil LeBeau, who's our order reporter, you're out at City Field, and I believe you felt it there as well. Phil? Uh, we did feel it in the middle of doing an interview with uh, Jim Lentz from Toyota Motor USA. Behind me, Jackie Robinson Rotunda, that's where we were doing the interview. Uh, it was swaying halfway decently. I was a little shocked. I've never felt an earthquake before. They've now evacuated everybody out of here. All the journalists, uh, executives from Toyota, they're all out here in the parking lot where they're going to be driving the, the uh, Camry. That's the event we were here for. But I have to say, guys, in the middle of the interview, when I noticed the Camry was, it was moving a decent amount back and forth, and then mm -hmm. I looked up and saw the uh, lights inside moving, I thought, we are having an earthquake. And so that, in fact, uh, was the feeling uh, about you know, 10, 15 minutes ago. Okay, Phil LeBeau, thank you very much for that. Phil LeBeau, yeah, of course, was there at City Field. Uh, they just did a Toyota interview and then they uh, got evacuated. But uh, let's go out to uh, Kayla Talshi once again. Kayla, you've been uh, following the Dominic Strauss Khan story all day, and I believe that the courthouse where you are in Lower Manhattan has also been evacuated. It has, Mandy. It was just in the middle of a press conference with the district attorney to discuss the events of the last two days. You can see the people all standing outside here. We were watching it on tape so that we could take close notes uh, from the truck that we were sitting in here outside the courthouse. And all of a sudden, we saw in the video that everyone just got up and left. And so we came outside. We felt the truck shaking back and forth, but thought that maybe, you know, the weight was off or something. And we went outside and saw that everyone started evacuating. They were lining mm -hmm. up outside. and and they had all felt the earthquake and so uh, we're not sure how long they'll be out here and, uh, and you've also been evacuated is that correct well actually I wasn't in the bureau because I was reporting from a live truck today for our home sales report so I was in a house and let me just say that I have never felt the house shake like that before I actually thought something was exploding in the basement um, we lost all you know cell service and phone service etc and a lot of people kind of running out into the street out of their houses saying did anyone else feel that? Unfortunately, the biggest problem for us is we seem to have lost a lot of satellite signals and cell signals throughout the area, which is causing a lot of trouble getting through to people. Okay, Diana, thank you very much for the update there. Of course, we're following the, uh, the ramifications of the, uh, the magnitude 6 earthquake, which was centered in Virginia. Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's a, listen, there's not a lot of East Coast earthquakes, and, I, and uh, the upside of that is that we don't get to deal with it very much. The downside of that is that because of that, a lot of mm -hmm. building codes on the East Coast of the United States are not to the same level in more earthquake-centered zones. Like San Francisco, the, the building codes are so much stronger there because it's so rare. There is a giant tectonic, I don't want to get wonky right. in geology, but the Ramapo Fault actually right. goes right by New York City. And, and, let's, not, and let's not forget Missouri and areas in the Midwest where there are big issues raised, and that gets into construction standards, and, and, and that's the first thing you think. I Look, I just moved from California a year ago, and, I, and, the, fir and the first thing I thought when my, when, when my producer said, did you feel that, is I said, I said, no, I didn't feel anything because there can't be earthquakes here. You just don't think about it, you know, but there are. There, we know there, there, there are. are because there the, are. Again, the Ramapo Fault runs mm -hmm. actually down the coast, and it runs by, by New York. It's pretty inactive as far as the tectonic plate. I don't want to get crazy on the geology. Yeah, we're also hearing that the NYMEX has been evacuated. We're going to try and get uh, Mary Thompson on the phone in just a second because uh, she was down there at the stage, at that stage. Uh, and uh, we're just also seeing... Did we have a volume chart? Is there a way that we can, guys, can we throw up a volume chart? I'd like to see what happened, kind of mirror what we saw Bob Pisani mm -hmm. was saying, listen, right now, no plans to evacuate the NYC, no plans to halt trading, but there was definitely a blip. Absolutely. Uh, Simon Hobbs, uh, you are on the phone and you're on the streets of New York. Uh, did you feel anything when you were out there? Um, yeah, Maria, I'm uh, on the streets of New York. We felt the vibration. I'm up in, uh, in meatpacking, and the building shook several times. And uh, the first I realized there was a major problem was this, the sound of screaming children, because some, one of the nannies upstairs in my apartment block had tried to take the kids out, and the kids apparently got trapped on the fire escape, or so they thought. So they were hysterical, and... Uh, they kind of got into the lift, which probably wasn't the best thing to do at the time, but it was a way of escape. Yeah, people are very scared here. A lot of the workmen are all standing out in the street looking fairly bemused. Uh, it's, a, it's an interesting afternoon. Yes, it's not something that you would normally expect when you walk out into the streets of uh, New York on a very sunny day. Thank you very much for that, Simon. Uh, let's get out to Mary Thompson on the phone as well, because she has been evacuated from the NYMEX. Where, uh, did you also feel that quake, Mary? Uh, yes, Mandy. I'm standing actually in the corner of Bessie and North End Avenue, right outside of the NIMAX, where we felt the shaking at about 154 or so. 
um, this afternoon. It lasted for about a minute, and I'd say 45 seconds into that, we were told to evacuate the building. Now, if anyone who's familiar with Lower Manhattan, they know right next to the NIMAX is um, offices for Merrill Lynch, and then about two blocks down, offices for Goldman Sachs as well. So, again, a good part of the financial district, it seems right now, out on the streets as all the buildings were evacuated in the lake of um, the earthquake that hit the New York metro area, and as I understand it, went all down uh, the mid-Atlantic region as well today. Very crowded scene here. The non-ex um, trading has been halted. No word yet as to when it is going to resume, but as soon as I know, I certainly will let um, you know mm -hmm. as well. Mandy? Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna, I just got an email from my wife. She works, she's actually on the 24th floor of a building in Midtown New York. She said that everybody's being told to leave that building as a precaution. I mean, what we're getting here, guys, is regardless, trading is going to halt, but we're going to have an epic jam up in New York City. That's absolutely right. Everybody's going to be leaving, filing and to the trains. Of course, we need to find out from Amtrak and New Jersey Transit and the other train systems here and the airports what their status is, if there's any reports of, of track issues because of this as well. Mm -hmm. So it should be a, an interesting evening, to say the least, in New York City. Yeah, and the footage you were seeing just a moment ago was actually of people being evacuated from the courthouse. Of course, we were talking about that earlier on with Kayla Talshi, and uh, Hampton Pearson has also just written into us saying that uh, hundreds of people are on the streets. Uh, he's been evacuated from outside our bureau in uh, the North Capitol buildings in D.C. and. Um, the, the Union Station building also shook. People were racing out of the building. So obviously, you know, in a, in a situation like this, people don't take any chances. You know, there are ancient, there are ancient faults that go all the way from Canada to, the, to at least South, South Carolina, according to some of the research uh -huh. I'm just doing yep. here. You know, you have them all the way along. You know, there have been quakes in Connecticut. There, you know, uh, so it's not unusual. But the biggest ones in the East Coast occurred, you know, many years ago. We've had no reports of injuries or damage from this quake to this point, thankfully, but to be a 5.9, it's now been revised yet again, to 5.9, mm -hmm. which would be considered a moderate to slightly heavy. Nothing in the magnitude of what we saw in, for example, the 1994 earthquake in Southern California, which, was, if memory serves, was 6.8 or something on that magnitude. That's, that's big. That's a big earthquake. A 5.9 is moderate to moderately heavy, but to be felt that far away such a wide area from the Virginia area all the way to Martha's Vineyard, all the way to Detroit, suggests to yeah. me it was probably deep into the, into the earth, uh, uh, and that's why it was felt so far away. Well, Good, just a guess. Just a guess, and, uh, and hopefully, um, we certainly hope there won't be any yeah. injuries reported. Uh, let's get out to Bob Pisani once again on the floor of the exchange. I believe you've got a guest there with you, Bob. Yeah, Lou Pastin is the head of floor operations. He's the guy who makes all the decisions on things running, people staying. What's the status right now, Lou? Uh, so far, so good, uh, Bob. You know, we all felt what everyone uh, around, around the East Coast felt. Our uh, data center is functioning fine, and our uh, systems are all functioning. Right now, we're, uh, we're going to close this day out unless we hear something else. We're monitoring the situation like everyone else. Now, everybody back here, of course, you see all the officials here behind Did us. Uh, this is the NERV data center where the data comes Airports. in and people are deciding what to do. Uh, all systems are operating normally, is that correct? I see some people looking around. I don't see any malfunctioning, bleeping red dots or anything like that. No red on the screens, Bob. We have orders coming in. Reports are going back. Uh, people are executing orders and signing them in right now. So far, so good. Do you have a plan when something like this happens? I mean, is there an emergency situation plan that you go to? Describe, uh, walk us through here what might happen in the event things would have been worse. Well, if things were worse, you know, we'd have an orderly shutdown to the extent that we could do that. Uh, we've been through situations like that before. You've been here when they, uh, when those situations have arisen. And, uh, you know, we're not there yet at, at this point, so we're monitoring the situation. But there are procedures to shut down the market in an orderly fashion. Now, the NYSE is staying open, but I understand there are some buildings around us uh, that are evacuating right now. Can you give us some information on that? Uh, they appear to be at this time. If you see, you see people in the streets, uh, you know, it's tough to get through on a cell phone or landline at this point because there's congestion. So people are worried about their loved ones, and, uh, you know, it's, there's right to be concerned there. Uh, and so they're going to head out. That, that's on their own volition. Right now, uh, we're staying here. All right. You heard it from the man on the floor. NYSC staying open. All systems normal. If there's any change in that, I'll be down here on the floor. And, of course, we'll let you know immediately. Guys, back to you. Okay. Thank you very much, Bob. Thank you for keeping us updated on that situation. Yeah. And, and again, guys, we're, we're facing now... From a transportation perspective, mm -hmm. like we said, we're trying to get you updates on the train systems because obviously what's going to happen now in D.C. with the metro and in New York City with our transit system is like my wife and a bunch of other people are being basically told to go home, get out of their buildings. They're going to start filing to Grand Central, yep. Penn Station, Union Station in D.C., Penn Station in Philadelphia. 
all headed to the same yep. place. We're working to get you updates from Amtrak and all the major transportation, uh, the airports, to figure out if you're on your way, if it's going to happen, if yep. there's any track updates. There's a lot of different things that we're trying to work on for you here, folks, and we're certainly going to bring them to you as soon as we can. Let's get to Pat Anastasi. Uh, did I hear correctly with NBC? Uh, in w Sorry, with CNBC, uh, a producer with uh, CNBC in D.C. Pat, uh, what are you hearing? What are you, what are you, what are you feeling? Well, we're right outside the Capitol here. They've moved everyone across the street on that Delaware and Constitution about 200 yards from the actual Capitol building. They've evacuated everybody. It seems to be very peaceful. Everyone seems calm. The only thing uh, going on right now is there are sirens everywhere at this point. No one seems to be panicking. There's no obvious signs of any damage or anyone injured. Uh, just a lot of confusion. This isn't the type of stuff that you have in this area, at least not too often. But things... Uh, we seem to have things under control. Uh, of course, Capitol Police all over the place. Well, well, Pat, blocks, Pat, corners and blocks. You can't Pat, it's, Bri Bri Pat, it's, Pat, it's Brian, Brian Sullivan. Evacuated everyone from every building around here that I can see. Pat, it's Brian Sullivan. Give us an update on the streets. I, I mean, does it look like pretty much everybody is leaving their office building or their place of work? I mean, D.C. known for it's a place of low buildings, right? Yeah, doesn't have the, doesn't has, have the skyscrapers like New York Those City. Buildings, of course, are more than eight or ten stories tall in this area. They're all out. You know, it's a nice day outside, so everyone's sort of standing around. There's no one jamming the streets. There aren't a lot of cars, at least in this area, and that may be partially due to the fact that Capitol Police have blocked off a lot of the intersections to keep people from going toward the Capitol or the various House and Senate office buildings at this point. Oh. Okay, Pat, thank you so much for the quick update there. Uh, I want to get out to now a soundbite um, from Phil LeBeau. He was in the middle of doing a Toyota interview uh, at City Field when the earthquake hit. So let's have a li listen in. You know, if, if you feel like the building's moving right now, it's because it does feel like we had a bit of a mini earthquake in here, and the building is moving. There you have it. Phil LeBeau was, uh, was there interviewing someone from Toyota.